I'm Beth Cavett, author of the blog that you're visiting today. It's not my real name, as I've always said, but when I began to write this 12 years ago, I needed to protect the identity of people who were very, very dear to me. Uh, if you're here today, it's probably because you have learned of the allegations that are piling up against the founder of the International House of Prayer and others around him, Mike Bickle appointed forerunner of the generation that was going to usher in the return of Christ. A lot has happened in the last 10 years. It's just under a decade since I wrote my last post about the International House of Prayer. One of the last things I wrote was called Coming Out Alive, if you don't read anything else. And you have been part of a movement turned out to be promoting a deception that you believed was true. I would recommend above everything else that I wrote that you read that post. I want to tell you first and foremost, a decade out, that Coming Out Alive is not only possible, uh, we are more than alive we are more than survivors we are flourishing let's talk about the international house of prayer publicly the allegations against mike are kind of like a specter like a monster it is apparently so much worse than any of us could have imagined i take issue with that but i understand the sentiment the world or at least a corner of it is waiting to hear what exactly it is that Mike Bickle and company are accused of. So it is a very, very interesting moment in history, in the history of the church, even touching on the global church, because Mike Bickle's reach has definitely extended into the millions and around the globe. Um, the monster is going to be truly truly horrifying so the question the first question uh, that i think even the media is waiting for is who are the victim so my answer to that would be everyone anyone who heard and received in the inner person the teaching of mike bickle particularly if you read my are you passionate post in which he presents a sensual experiential knowledge inner knowledge of the man Jesus Christ in the inner chambers. I, I can't, I can't even, it's so disgusting. I can't even, it's easier to write than to say, let's put it that way. But um, then, then they, they're, they're a victim of, you might say, clergy sexual abuse. This is why the New Testament warns us over and over over. You know anything about IHOP, you know that it is entirely built, not on biblical revelation, but prophecy. Mike Bickle sent out a spirit. Uh, he spoke from a spirit. He proclaimed the prophecies that had anointed him, the one that was going to, as I said, usher in, well, bring in the youth movement that was going to usher in the second coming of Christ through day and night worship in the spirit of the tabernacle of David, blah, 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 blah. So um, what spirit was that? I want to share with you the first time I ever saw Mike Bickle. I was just a young teen and my parents had driven me to Kansas City because I had a sister who was all in. And I remember I was in the back of that room that is was a lot smaller and you know the rows of chairs had this stage and Mike Bickle was on the stage and he was radiant radiant and I watched kind of from the back of the room as my sister ran up so excited to introduce us to him and um, he bent down on the stage she was on the floor uh, she was in her somewhere around 20 and um, he grabbed her head with both of his hands and planted a massive kiss on her forehead. They were such shining stars. And it was dazzling. Just like Jude says, wandering, wandering stars. The book of Jude in the New Testament, in case you're not sure what I'm referencing. When it talks about these false teachers, it says that they will be like wandering stars, like waterless clouds, appearances and experiences that prove empty, hollow, hold no real nourishment, and have no power for salvation. 
This is the telltale sign. Jesus Christ offers salvation from sin in the inner man. And that is good news, but only to those who need salvation from sin. To those who need shining stars. Those who want to be appearing as angels of light, those who want to be on a stage with the ones who are on the stage, those who want the praise of man, those who want experiences that lift, alleviate the feelings of shame and sin instead of actually crucifying that shame and sin. How do you move from that fake world of illusions, pleasing men, and being tricked into the real deal with the real Jesus. Um, it's at the foot of the cross. And I would point you in the scripture, the story of the publican and the Pharisee. And if you recall it, the Pharisee is out on the corner and he's praying to God, Oh God, oh God, thank you that I am not like one of those. And he's looking at the publican. The publican is down beating his chest and saying, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Uh, did you ever notice the special pronunciation for Jesus? There literally is a worship leader with an affectation of a British accent. Like she's from the Midwest, but it wasn't that hard to see. Jesus came for you, not for a show and his love it is humbling. It is for people who need salvation from sin. It is not for those who are dark, but lovely. It is for those who are dead in their trespasses. The true gospel stands in stark contrast to the lover Jesus. God bless you.